What's up guys, it's your boy Darkskin, and today we're actually going to be doing a free-to-play tier list video. Now, um, I'm only going to be going over, like, the, basically, rares, the SRs, and then, like, the free-to-play SSRs, which are these two. Um, talking about them and how they fit into it and how good they are, etc., yada, yada, yada. Uh, I'm not going to be going over any of the summonable SSRs or coin shop units or anything like that, so I'm letting you guys know now. <clears throat> we're going to be starting from bottom, we're going to be starting from the bottom going to the top. And doing it like that. So, the first person is going to be Taizo. Taizo, he's not, he's, he's like average. He's very, very average. Um, his passive isn't that bad. Uh, decrease all allies damage taken in PvP by 20%. He can tank for you as well. Like, he's, he's pretty average, but he's not that bad of a unit. Honestly. Uh, Twigo. Twigo isn't that good of a unit, but he becomes way better because of his passive. His passive increases strength ally, well, increases strength attribute allies HP by 30%. If you guys don't know, right, HP is like one of the most important stats in the game, right? So his, like his passive makes him infinitely like amazing already, right? Passive alone. So he becomes A tier. Uh, otherwise he'd be like B tier. If, like if it wasn't for his passive. Going on to Simon. Now Simon is also an average unit, right? But, like, in PvP, his passive is pretty good. But, uh, I'm, I'm gonna still put him, uh, like, A, A, right? A is gonna be, like, the units who have good passives. Or it's gonna be, like, the, the pretty good units, right? But, um, yeah, Simon's passive increases all allies damage dealt in PvP by 15%. That's actually pretty good. I mean, he has some AoE, right? And then he has a single target. So, like, he's, he's not that bad, but, like, he's, he's very average. His passive makes him really good as well. A lot of these units are just going to be good because of their passive, really. <clears throat> uh, Ruin? Not that good. I'm, like, not that good at all. Like, they, de they can decrease the uh, attack of the enemies, which, I mean, it's cool and all. Uh, but, but overall, Ruin's just not good. That's just how it is. <clears throat> Marmus. Marmus also... Is not a good unit, but he becomes good because his passive increases blue units HP by 30%. Also, moving on, uh, Jude. Now, Jude is not that good either. He, he's just very underwhelming. As far as free-to-play goes, you would not really use him at all. Uh, these three units you'd use, like, in the fourth slot for their passives, basically. <clears throat> Hugo. Hugo's the next unit. Also, not good at all. His passive's not good. He's not good. It's just not good at all. Uh, Golgius, this is my boy. I don't know why I like Golgius so much, but I like Golgius. If you've watched the show, like, he was just so funny, like, with how he did stuff. But he's not good at all as well. Uh, I'm just going to skip past, like, most of these. Alioni. Alioni's not that good, but he, he becomes better because of his passive. He gives uh, green units HP by 30 per, or attack by 10%. Excuse me. So, um, yeah, he, he becomes way better because of his passive. Um, now, Arthur. Arthur is actually pretty good, like, as a unit. Where's he at, right? Arthur, as a unit, is actually pretty good, right? Um, well, average. He's average. He's not pretty good. He's average. Uh, passive's decent. Attack's decent. Uh, ultimate decent. Everything is decent. These two units are good as units. These units, their passives are good, and these are just bad units. So, that's that's how it is so far. Alright, now we get on to, to the real good stuff. Gustav. Gustav is S tier. I, I'd even I'd even say he's he might be SS tier, right? Gustav is S tier because he can freeze. And if you guys don't know, freeze is um it's, it's CC, right? But you can do it level 1, right? And on top of doing it level 1, if it's level 2 or 3, it boosts the damage, right? And with Red Demon being out, and Red Demon being the only demon out, like, Gustav is just, like, amazingly good, right? So he, I, I would even wager he's SS tier, but right now, he's S tier for sure, right? Uh, Green Dreyfus. Green Dreyfus is actually a pretty good unit, right? Um, he gives his team penetration rate, and um, he's just, he's just all around a decent unit, A tier, for sure. Um, moving on to this guy. Right, this guy is also a good unit. He's not amazing, but he is definitely good. He has some uh, decent damage. 
He can increase um, pierce rate and he heals, which is pretty good. Uh, and he can give his team cure, so that works as well. So pretty good unit, uh, good stuff. Now, SR Liz, also S tier. Okay, now the, if you guys don't know, the reason why she's S tier is because, number one, her passive, she gives her team back um, HP even in the fourth slot, right? She gives her team back HP, she can heal, and her ultimate is a huge heal, right, as well. And she gives rejuvenate for three turns amazing unit yes there are other units that can heal like he heals but she's just the best free-to-play healer like in the as far as free-to-play units go she is the best free-to-play healer so she is s tier now red dn red dn um she's not bad at all she is a pretty average good unit right um b would be average and a would be good unless you're counting these four these four is just their passes but these three units are actually pretty good units as far as free-to-play goes um she can decrease defense related stats and she can disable stances um she's just pretty decent moving on to wine height i don't know how you, i'm not sure how you say this man's name but wine height he would in any other circumstance he would not be good right but because he has two aoe attacks both of his attacks are aoe he becomes pretty good because he's a farmer if you guys don't know what a farmer is basically someone that can farm like stages really quickly and he can do that because all both of his attacks are aoe right so um pretty good unit for farming because both of his attacks do aoe damage and they both do the same amount of damage uh each so like there's never going to be one card better than the other if he's using an attack attack card it's going to be good s okay sr slater sr slater is an is another one of those units that are is S tier. Now, the only reason why I'm not putting Slater and Gustav SS tier is because there are some units that stand out like uh, way above the others, and you're gonna see what I mean. But this Slater, he can literally he has a debuff that stops you from using anything except for attack cards, which is really good. And then his other attack card, which is just an attack, he gives him life steal. So like he, he's just all around a really good unit. Uh blue meliotis now this unit is ss tier now i don't know if you guys have seen any of my videos or seen how he works but Mel this meliotis has weak point if you guys don't know what weak point is basically if the if an enemy is debuffed you will do triple damage that is amazing then on top of triple damage on his attack card he has a counter and the counter lasts the entire turn which is really good as well and his ultimate um has double crit chance on top of his passive giving him crit chance so he's a crit he, he does really good he, he crits a lot of the time a really good unit he if you are free to play like if you're like me who you're only using free to play units this is going to be one of your main units he's going to be one of your main units on your account he is ss tier for sure um jillian jillian is not that good but she becomes better because of her uh passive she, she's not bad but she's not good but her passive gives uh, green units HP, so she's, she's pretty good. She's pretty good right there. Now, Blue Jericho. Blue Jericho is one of those S units. The reason why, Blue Jericho, um, not only does her passive give uh, blue units attack-related stats increased by 10%, her first attack has double crit chance, so she's going to be critting a lot of the time. Um, her base crit chance is already 30, so 60% crit chance. Then she can heal as well, right? Which is really good. And then her ultimate also applies bleed. So overall, a uh, really good unit. I put her S tier. Green Hauser. Green Hauser is average. He's average, but he's not that bad. Um, he, he has a really good attack card. 240 damage, 300 damage, then 500 damage. Um, his pass is pretty and, and then he has a counter. And the counter... Um, is for allies as well as himself. So if you attack at all, uh, he will counter. So that's pretty decent, right? So we're going to put him A tier as well. Moving on to Blue Hauser. Blue Hauser is just not that good. Uh, I mean, he's, he's very, very average. We're going to put him here. Uh, he's not super bad. Like, he's not as bad as these units, but he's very, very average. Um, he has an AoE attack. Then he gets um, decreased like HP of enemies, but he's just not that good, right? So he'd be right there for sure. Moving on to Red Jericho. Red Jericho is very average as well. Uh, a lot of people are asking me who's better, Blue or Red Jericho. Blue Jericho is better for sure. Now, 
Um, she becomes better with her passive because her passive increases uh, red allies' attack-related stats by 10%. But outside of that, she's she's not good, right? Just like this is just passive, right? All of these units to the left of Jillian are passive, right? Or left of Jericho are just like passive good, right? Now, moving on, Gila. Gila's actually pretty good as well. Um, well, she's not pretty good, she's average. She um her first card is an AoE, which applies ignite stacks, which is really good, and it applies um ignite stacks for three, four, and five turns, right? Then um she also can heal, which is really good, and she removes debuffs. Uh I'd actually place her a little higher to be honest. She's actually pretty good. Um the only downside is her like percentages are not high on her attack. It goes 80%, 120, 200. But like I said, it's AoE and she applies ignite stacks. So she can like stack it if she um like you know if she, if she spams that ability, it'll stack. So it's pretty good. Uh moving on. Red Grimoire. Red Grimoire. Actually, what we're gonna do here, look, this is what I'm gonna do, right? I'm gonna add a row. I'm gonna add a row, right? So this, this, so you guys don't get confused, right? So these the, these bad units go down here. These are average units. They'll go down here, and then the B tier units are literally just because they're passives, right? That's what we're gonna do. Any unit that's good on their passive, they go down there. That that way, there's no confusion, right? Uh, so boom, we'll do it like that. There you go. All right, so. Moving on, Red Grimoire. Red Grimoire is only good because of his passive. His passive increases allies' HP-related stats by 15% in PvP, which is pretty good. But, um, yeah, literally just, that's it. Like, this, we'll put passive. Right there, boom. All right, passive units. Uh, moving on to, who are we moving on to? Blue Grimoire. Blue Grimoire is not that good. He is just not that good, honestly. Um, obviously, <clears throat> he has a, uh, what, a counter? A taunt, excuse me. His taunt's pretty decent, but outside of that, like, he just doesn't do anything. So, uh, yeah, he's definitely right there. Guild Thunder. Blue Guild Thunder, literally only good for his passive. 60% defense to all blue units. Literally, that's it. That's all he's used for. Now, Green Guild Thunder is S tier. Man is very, very good. His, um... His boost is literally used amongst, like, whales. Even whales use this guild thunder. Like, he's very, very good. I'd say he's even SS. Um, his boost is just something, like, it's a limited resource. No one else boosts on the free-to-play. <coughs> free, she's horrible. Uh, free, she's just horrible. I, I, nothing else to say. Um, this Elizabeth, she's very good. She would be S tier. Um... She's going to be your go-to for Red Demon if you're talking free-to-play units. Just because um, how her passive works. She literally unli she gets unlimited damage if she does not get attacked. So, very good. Um, Green Elizabeth. She's going to be really good for a farmer. Along with this guy, these two people are going to be really good for a farm. She has AoE and single target, but her AoE is pretty good. So, uh, yeah. She's going to be good as far as like farming goes. Now, Dreyfus. Dreyfus, not only is he good for his passive, he's actually a pretty good unit. He's actually a pretty good unit. So, um, he definitely goes to A tier. Both of his attacks are pretty good. This, and his passive increases defense to red allies by 60%. Now, moving on to Gother. Gother is S tier. The reason why Gother's S tier is because not only can he rank down on his first, second, and third um, ranking of his first card... He also can take away old gauge and um, on his other card he can literally reduce old damage so in pvp like he's a monster he's actually a monster in pvp and his passive is pretty good in pvp as well so like very very good um kane kane is gonna be pretty average uh he has ignite on both of his cards and um he can boost damage to allies in a death match, which would be Red Demon, etc. But it's like, eh, he's just not that crazy, you know? Um, moving on, right? Red Bond. Red Bond, SS tier. Now, the reason why Red Bond is SS tier is because of how he functions, right? Um, Red Bond is one of the only units, especially for free-to-play, that can take away ult gauge, right? Um, 
Not many people can take away ult gates. Now, Gother, don't get me wrong, Gother can take away ult gates, right? But how Gother ult, like takes away ult gates, number one, he has to have a level two card, and he has to rank down a skill. With Bon, if Bon attacks you with a rank one card, he takes ult gates. If he attacks you with a rank two card, he takes away one ult gauge. And if he attacks you with a rank three card, he takes away three ult gauge, right? Making him very, very good. Um, and then his second card, at, at level one, he heals for 30% of damage taken. At level two, he gets debuff immunity and he heals for 50% of damage taken. Then if you go to his third rank three, Debuff immunity and he evades attacks. So he can't be damaged and he heals for 50% of damage dealt. Not to mention his passive. If he goes below 50% HP, he's he gets 30% lifesteal. And then his ultimate's just pretty good as well. Um ignores defense, 700% attack, really good. Now, obviously moving on to King and DN, right? I don't really need to talk about them. They are God status. They are God status. These, if you're free to play, if you're only using free to play units like I am, these are your go-to units. You will use them 100% of the time. Um, now, I mean, we could obviously mix, mix and match. Uh, Gustav might debatably be up there, so it's Slater, something like that. Um, you could obviously debate that this is B tier. If you want to go ahead and make another, uh, like, add another row, right? If you want to add another row. And make this one D, make this one C. Um, give me a second. We can go ahead and do that. And then, like, if you, if you want, you can actually put it like this if you want to as well. Uh, I feel like he goes down there. And I feel like he goes down there. And this is literally just passive. Like, literally, outside of their passive, they're, they're not that good. And you can actually move this one up. Do it like that. Yeah, so this would probably be my like. Eh, we'd move. I, I'd move him up there. Yeah, this is probably. Be, this would be like my definitive, like free to play tier list. Um, obviously there's some debatables going on with these right here. Um, but overall this would probably be my tier list as far as free to play. So. Um, anyways, that's gonna be it for this video. Be sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, comment down below, tell me you guys in the comment section below. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.